Hey, hey, and welcome to my next tutorial video. In this video, I am going to explain the difference between the block command and the W block command. They can be very easily confused and also misused, and they're very different, and they both each, each individually have a purpose. Um, I would say the most used is probably W block, but hey, block is still just as important, and again, they have their own purpose. So the block command, I'm just going to type it out here for the sake of a visual, see? Um, the block command, this is mainly used for inside one file only, okay? So if you were creating, let's say you're working on a very specific project, and you draw, had to draw off something very specifically just for this project, and you'll never have to use it for any other project, then using a, the block command is the way to go. It's fantastic for a one-on-one -on -one file basis. The W block command, on the other hand, is used for all sorts of files. So this is like if you had a generic table or a generic chair, for instance, like I've got on my screen, or a very generic title or uh, view title, I'll say, or very generic stove, kitchen, toilet, sink, you know, the basic, uh, let's say, blocks that you may use in every single project. Or let's say it's that one um, a screw head or nail head or um, machined part that you use all the time. I'm speaking to all sorts of different trades here. So that's when you use W block. And the difference, again, is the W, really. Um, the W means write, as in writing a letter. W-R-I-T-E. And W block means you are writing the block, which actually means you write a whole separate DWG file for it. So it creates its own drawing file, um, and it's actually its own entity. So I'm going to show both of them. The block command. I'm going to make the block command of a chair on the right, and I'm going to do the W block of the big table you see here on the left. Okay. Look. And actually, for short, it's just B enter, nice and quick, B enter. And this is the block definition dialog box. So this right here, right away, you're going to give it a name. So I'm going to give it uh, dining chair. And I, again, like to uh, type all in caps. So dining chair. Next, you'll see there's like three little boxes, one, two, and three, and little headings above. The first one's base point. You're going to use this little icon. You want to pick your base point because you have the power. You want to choose where this base point goes. And a base point is, again, the grip point you use to move an object. It is also the insertion point. So when you insert this block into something else, it is where the crosshair is attached to the object. That is your base point. So you're going to go ahead and use that icon. And I like to usually pick like the bottom left, bottom right corner, sometimes top left, top right. So in this case, I'm going to go bottom right. And it brings me back to my block definition box. Now, this X, Y, and Z axis, please ignore. It is the exact X, Y, and Z axis that I literally picked where you see that green endpoint there. That is that, that location. So please do not copy and paste these into your screen. Please use that icon and pick your own base point on your own object on your own file. All right, and again, you're going to then see your own X, Y, and Z axis, okay? And we're in 2D, so of course Z is zero. Next box, objects. Uh, objects. Again, I do not want to include everything in this file. I have both the dining table and the chair in here, so I don't want the dining table a part of this block. So I want to spe specify and select my objects. We're going to use that icon again. And I'm going to use a nice green box around my chair. Once I've selected all my objects in my block, I press Enter. Be sure you select all your objects. If you need to go back and select more, go ahead and use that icon and go ahead and make your selection. Press Enter. What then happens is you get a little preview here, which is quite nice. You can double check that you have, in fact, selected the right objects. And you also get a number count of objects, which is quite cool. Not that I know that I have 11 objects or anything or how many objects that are in that chair, but it at least lets you know a number count in case you do know or in case you want to know. It's quite nice. Now, before we move on to the third column, we have to double check here that you've got convert to block selected. You do not retain or delete on, you know, again, it, retain means retain as its own separate objects, not as one, and delete means, okay, delete the objects. I don't know why you really would want to use this, so we want to convert the block. Behavior. Annotative means same behaviors as annotative text and dimensioning, so based on scale. Um, so again, if you had a certain scale of drawings and you know you want to put this chair in a quarter inch scale, then you can use annotative. But I've drawn it one to one, and all my files are one to one, and then I would draw my, I would scale my drawings as a whole. So I do not want this as annotative. 
But I do want to allow uh, it to be scaled uniformly. So let's say if all of a sudden uh, my clients go, you know what, I'd rather this chair just a little bit uh, um, quarter inch larger or quarter inch smaller. I can do that with scale. So I want to scale it uniformly. And let's say I want to make an edit, then I do want to allow exploding. Um, if you don't want to allow exploding, then uncheck that box. Same with the scale uniformly. Settings is just basically your units. Please make sure that you've chosen the units that you've actually drawn the object in. I drew it imperial, so therefore I have inches chosen. If you would like to give it a description, you can do so, but I can't honestly tell you where else you see this description. I don't know. I don't know where you see it or why you'd want to put this here, but again, if you would like to, sure, but I don't know where you see it. <laughs> so it's just a little interesting. I have yet to figure that out where you actually see this description if you add one later. <laughs> Okay, and you can go ahead and click OK. And just like that, your screen will load. But if you now go over your, your chair, it is now one object. It is a block. And if I select it, in fact, look at where the grip point is, my base point. The base point that I selected is now where the grip point is. And if I'd like to move my chair, I can go ahead and move the chair. Okay? So that is block. All right, that is block. Um, I just undid block, so let me control Y to redo. There we go, so now my block is back. <laughs> that is block. So if I went to, for example, if I go into the insert tab and I look into my blocks into the insert tab, I've had all sorts of blocks into this file before, but now you'll see I have dining chair at there at the top. So let's say I want to add another one at the other side. Mirror would obviously be much quicker anyway, but there we go. I've got my other dining chair and now I can just mirror it here. I would have just mirrored the other one to begin with, but I'm just uh, using the example of uh, inserting the block, and this is what I do. I can insert the block into this file. If I go ahead and open up another file, let's say, uh, sure, this file. I've got all sorts of different CAD files that I've used recently. Uh, we'll use this one. Let it load, let it load, come on. Screen sharing and recording at the same time seems to take a while. And I have a lot of XREFs in here too. Okay, so here we are. If all of a sudden I now go into my insert tab here and I go looking for that chair, I can't find it. It is not there. It is nowhere to be found. Like if I even use the I enter, the insert command, it's not even under my, my recent. There it is. It is there, sure, but let me click on it. nothing happens it gives me an error it says what like nothing happens it's non-existent okay but if i go here i have my insert tab open and i click on the dining chair it's right here i have it i'm making the argument block b-l-o-c-k block itself that command is only now for this file this chair is only for this file if I want to use it for any other file, I have to use copy-paste, which I don't recommend at all. If it's your own drawings, then different story. But I do not want to recommend copy-paste by any means because it just leaves room for plagiarism. and We don't have any room for that. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Block only for this file you made it in. That's it. Can't find it anywhere else. All right. Now, well, let's talk about W block. We're now going to write the table. As a, as a W block, write the block. And again, you'll see here at the beginning, I've got all sorts of objects, right? It's not attached, it's all sorts of different objects. I meant to show you that with the chair, I forgot it was all different objects, I promise. <laughs> okay, now let's use W block. So the short form for that is WB, enter. <clears throat> and I get the write block definition box. Now it's very similar to the block definition dialog box, but it's just a little bit different. We've got two columns instead of three. Very first is the source. It's actually three. It's just up here, really. It, make sure that you have the source first. You are going to select your own objects, not your entire drawing, because I brought all sorts of other things in here, right? We're going to then pick our base point once again and use the icon. And I'm going to choose the bottom right corner once again. And it brings me back to my block, right block dialog box. Now, again, same thing with the X and Y and Z. Your other one's X, Y, Z coordinates here will be completely different, um, because X and Y, really, um, because you've all chosen your own base points. All right, next, select objects. You're going to use this icon as well to select all of your objects. And again, I'm going to use a nice big green box around my whole dining table and press enter. 
Now, this time around, you do not get a preview. You still get a number count, but you do not get a preview, okay? But please also make sure that you have convert to block still chosen, not retain, not delete from drawing, okay? All right, final thing to do is a destination. You're going to wonder destination. Well, again, write block means that we are writing the block. So we are picking a whole brand new place to save this file. Again, writing the block means you write a new DWG file. You write a drawing file for it. So you need to pick a place in your computer where to save it. You've got to tell AutoCAD, where am I saving this file? So you click on the three little dots at the end there. Sorry, I meant to circle those. These three little dots here at the end and click on those and navigate through your folders. I'm already in the folder that I want to save this in and I'm going to go ahead and also give it a name. You not only pick a place to save the block here, but you also give it a name. If you've actually accidentally already clicked save, no worries, go ahead and click on those three dots again. So you're going to also pick a name in here. I'm going to call it dining table. And you, it's a good idea to save it to an older version of AutoCAD as well. So that way, no matter what version of AutoCAD you may find yourself in, you will still be able to open up this block. Click Save. And it brings us back to this dialog box. So once again, if you've made any mistakes there in that one, and you may not make any changes of your search path and or name and or year of AutoCAD you saved the file in, go ahead and click on these three dots here. Next is your insertion units. Again, please be sure that these are in the same units you've drawn your drawing in and click OK. And then it kind of flashes and then it remains. And if you highlight it over again, it's all attached. And once again, I've got one base point, bottom right corner where I selected my base point. OK, so now we've written the block. Now what is the difference? Now, if I go under insert, yeah, cool. There's my dining table, dining chair. Awesome. So I can decide to go ahead and insert another dining table. All right, now, what happens if I go into this folder? Okay, cool, let's see. Go into my Insert tab. Okay, nothing there, nothing there. Okay, that kind of makes sense because these are my recent blocks in this file that I've used. Okay, makes sense. Let's go into the Insert tab. I see Dining Chair. Let's say, double check. I see Dining Table, Dining Table. Okay, let's see my more saved. Dining Table, there it is, right on my crosshair. I'm going to place it and zoom into it. I can place this dining table in any file that I'd absolutely like to, to my heart's content. And in fact, if I go back into the folder that I saved it in, I'm gonna show you that it is right here, right there. Dining table, my own separate drawing file, and there is a nice little preview for it. It has written a drawing file for it and written the block. So once again, the block command we use for the dining chair is only meant for the file it was drawn in. It is not meant to be used for all sorts of other files. But the right, the W block, the right block command that we used for the table, that I'm able to insert into any file that I'd like. I'm able to search for it, find it, and sure enough, there is its actual drawing file in my computers. And that is the, the basic and main, most important differences between the block command and the W block command. Hope you learned something here. Thank you so much for listening. Hope you all take care. Ciao.